Good morning. Welcome to the junk pile. I am in a position where I need to replace the seals on a bearing, on a, uh, a rear wheel bearing, axle bearing, for an 86 Toyota one ton which has an 8 inch uh, differential. This is a scrap axle which is a seven and a half inch differential but uh, I'm I'm counting on some of the engineering being very similar and um, so I've taken this one apart just so I know what I'm doing what I've done is I've removed where are we I've removed the uh, the nuts from these they didn't come off easily but this one's scrap so I don't have to care um, these went through these flange holes and I had to cut this brake line right there and I had to remove the emergency brake attachment point which is uh, right there and that was hooked in with these old brake shoes so with that loose and the, the shoes removed um, and the the brake line and these four bolts I was able to make sure my camera's pointing something like the right way um, I was able to slide this out and of course this is uphill so that I don't have to worry about uh, the oil coming out eventually this will all go to the the scrappers. I see that there's a seal right here. I see that there's a seal right here, which would be the the inner seal that I've heard mentioned right there. On this side, I see what I've seen in other people's videos. I see, oh come on, focus. Focus. Yeah, there we go. I see that there's a retaining ring right there. I can see a little bit of a groove right, right there at the tip of my finger. And this retaining ring. And then this is the actual bearing. And then there's other... No, this is not the actual bearing. This is the uh, another spacer ring, and this is the actual bearing. And then there's going to be a seal around the outside of the whole thing. And it's pressed so that there's the backing plate. I really got to back up. There's the backing plate and all the rest of the brake stuff. There's a cup seal of some sort right in here. And that should be what I need to know. The next trick is without a hydraulic press, can I remove all of that? This one, I've got very little to lose, so there's your anatomy lesson. Here's the next step. I've got the E-clip removed, or C-clip, whatever you want to call it. I have the tool to pull these properly, and I don't know what I've done with it. So what I did was, as it sat in this ring, I took two screwdrivers, one to either side of a stud, and used the stud as a fulcrum, and pried them apart and got the edge of one of them over the edge and then I just worked it around and I got that off. Here's what's likely to be the interesting part. Bearing in mind that this is a junk axle that I don't have to care about. So, put on my gloves. I got that E-clip off and set aside, and they say, now if I was worried about damaging that end, I'd put something down so that there was the slightest bit of, of padding, but not enough to really stop the, the force. Here's a piece of shingle. Let's see if that fits. A little piece of asphalt shingle. There's one. Are we moving it all? No. Are we moving? 
No, not yet. Not yet. All right, well, what we've discovered is we can make a pretty good mark in a shingle without moving it. Look at that. I'm busting up the floor. Luckily this is concrete that I want managed or intended to bust out eventually anyway. But you know comparing that with that clip get the ball off without dropping it hopefully. Have I moved it at all? The clip, the clip doesn't quite fit straight in the groove anymore, so I have moved it some. Back on. I can no longer see that groove. What was that? Don't know. Let's put that hose over there. It is coming, not quickly. Hello. So my spacer ring that just fell off Woohoo! and there on my junk axle that I don't have to care much about I've got my bearing and everything on the other side so I suppose I'm still, even though I've got the axle out, <clears throat> now I've seen comments online that you can take a triangular file and touch up those couple threads there, or splines, and um, that's probably the simplest way, because there's plenty of, of meat there to, to actually engage as long as the whole thing's clean when it's done. And and if I were to take a um, an appropriate punch such as here's the the breaker bar out of my kit. That's not my hammer. And gently, oh, that falls right out. Good. So now I've got a rather dirty bearing and um, an empty cup. And let's take a look at this again. So we've got these studs. which look like they ought to pop right out of there. And these are junk studs. So those pop right out. Really. And then here's the brake backing plate, which I hit just right, I see loosening up.
It's coming out. Ah. All right. So there's my bearing cup. And here, this is probably lousy light for this. Here, yeah, that seal ought to come out because it's going to want to be. Ouch, careful. A sliver off the floor. Somehow. That's going to want to be replaced, minding my hand, because I'm going to want that hand later. There's something solid inside there. There's something, some sort of a metal ring that's holding it in. But um, let's see, if I put that between my feet and tap at that, yep, tap at that lower edge with a hammer, that thing came right out. I can feel where I've dented the metal insert. But so there's an empty ring, a backing plate. That seems to be how the whole thing comes apart. And that implies that when I put it back together, I'll put on a new one of those, going that way. I'll put my bearing in, and probably take a block of wood and tap that in. And I'll have my spacer and ring. So it'll be on the axle, the plate. Back side with those studs aligned, that piece, and then or actually that way, and then the spacer and the and that should all go back together. I suppose this can go back out on the junk pile. I don't think there was anything wrong with the bearing though. bearing is that. Bearing feels good. 